Okay, and we're live. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me in my first episode of Two Chairs, One Artist. And we're here with Josh, Josh Henderson. He is the local artist here in Charlotte that is behind What Is Relaxed. I'm sure that many of you have, have heard about his clothing line. And we have some of his artwork here displayed um, so that you can listen to the thought behind his work as well as see his work all at the same time. So um, let's dig in, Sh okay. um, Josh. Yeah. Let's get I'm started. Ready. All right. Um, so, Josh, when did you realize you had a passion for, for creating art? Uh, it started pretty early. I think I tell everybody the same story. Uh, like back when I was in elementary school, I was drawing a lot of... Um, like me and my classmates were drawing Pokemon cards and stuff. So that was the hottest thing at the time. But I didn't know that I was actually good at it. Mm -hmm. So um, when all this, like other classmates saw it and they were like picking it up and looking at it, showing other people. And I didn't realize that, oh yeah, it does kind of look like the same thing. So um, after that, I really started taking that to the next level. I would, like even it, up into middle school, I was starting to like sell my drawings in class and stuff. So, really? Yeah. Entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, just yes. following my family's footsteps. Like it's just kind of natural. So everybody already had that same. Um, like naturally, we all have the entre entrepreneur spirit. So. That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> that is really cool. Where did you attend college? I went to North Carolina A&T State University. Okay. It's a long great. title. Yeah. It's yeah. so long, but um, yeah, I studied visual art and design. Okay. So that was that was fun. It was like, especially like the black experience, just mm -hmm. being around like-minded people and trying to get an education and everything. That was pretty oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I used to work at Tuskegee mm. University. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. And I had a lot of kids come in. I'm ready to leave. No, you cannot leave. <laughs> you should be here. You are surrounded by all of your people. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, do you have any childhood memories that are reflected in your art today? Um, I'd say I'm always revolving my work around being in a reflective state, mm -hmm. like really just taking the time to meditate or just, I'd say solitude yeah. so um like i like when i was growing up i had brother like older brother and older sister mm -hmm. and then we also always had family around so that was cool but i also knew when it was time for me to decompress like my social um meter kind of went up so i knew when to kind of dip off to the side and mm -hmm. and like enjoy my peace or like there was a lot of times where i was also um by myself so i had to spend time i had to i was already comfortable like being to myself mm -hmm. and uh, just like spending time outside or uh, just, you know, there wasn't a lot of kids in my neighborhood that I was close with. So I just spent a lot of time outside or just inside, like to myself, if it wasn't with my brother and sister already, mm -hmm. um, when everybody else was away or doing other stuff. So um, I had to have a big imagination, especially when my mom would take me places, um, vivid memories of being locked up in her studio uh, like just with just her taking me along mm -hmm. for um, when she's doing um, like business stuff like financial services so she was everybody's always been into like business related stuff mm -hmm. yeah so that's my work really revol revolves around just the imagination that I had when I couldn't if I didn't have a toy that I wanted I would make it myself you know I would craft like I would use cardboard or like construct some other stuff or um, or if there's just something a show a favorite show that I had, then I would draw about my favorite show. So it all kind of spawns from uh, just my time, you know, whether I'm like in isolation or if I'm outside playing and it's like a lot of nature or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of those things. Wow. So then being, being there with your mom, your mom is doing her thing and she says, okay, Josh, you sit right here and, and, and um, you work on your... Yeah, bring your Legos, bring, bring yeah. your favorite movies. Wow. And, um, you know, whatever other toys you got, you know, bring your sketch pad. And, um, and I'll just be there for most of her appointments, like early on as a kid. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. And it just or I was on a computer yeah. drawing a Microsoft Paint or something. 
I wish I could find some of those old drawings because that was pretty cool just to see what I could do mm -hmm. even at that age. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Um, so was there any one um, artist or or a teacher or a professor um, in in particular that influenced your art? Um, so from then to now, I'd say there's even people that aren't necessarily artists, but um, I think my early teachers, like um, uh, in high school, Gloria Brinkman, she was actually the first teacher to um, help me showcase my work. I, it was downtown in the Wachovia Center back then, whenever what it, whatever it was then, whatever it is now, um, the Wachovia uh, building, it had a gallery. Mm -hmm. And I had some work from high school in there. Like That was the beginning of everything. Uh, she kind of put me on to stuff like Gordon Parks, uh, like documentaries. And man, that, that was crazy. Um, just the, 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 the scope of his work. Um, looking into people like Salvador Dali and stuff like mm -hmm. some of the more um, like popular and unpopular artists she kind of just was throwing stuff my way and just to be around that was really uh, really cool her then uh, up in the college uh, Darlene McClinton she's mm -hmm. responsible for just like kind of helping me simplify um, simplify teaching uh, what I know now uh, as an illustrator it, it really kind of just made it in layman's terms because there was certain things that I didn't get and I was like I was I was already talented at what I was doing but just to like refine it and sharpen that sword really uh, made a big difference my um, art director Romieko Carter he's like he just knows everything like he just he's like a human Google mm -hmm. and he puts he also put a lot of students on different music like when they were just starting out so he's kind of tapped into like everything that's going on so it's cool to be around people who number one, like take the job seriously, and then who are uh, really into, like pouring into students, man. I mean, I could go, the list goes on, because I got um, a couple more people, like uh, John Harrison Jr., who's uh, helped me, like, when, I, when it comes to, like, making canvas and stuff, and uh, stretching canvas, then. Oh, yeah, I gotta yeah. learn how to stretch canvas. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, we can, we can go over that, because it's, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, it's pretty easy, and then the materials are, like, inexpensive, too, so mm -hmm. it's just a setup. I mean, you are really good at your framing so that'll be a, a, like that'll be one hump that you don't have to worry about and then um i got uh brian wilson i don't know if you've seen his stuff before but um he's yes, all over the city yeah. School. yeah yeah oh, the brian, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 okay yeah. cool that yeah that's that's like mr wilson <laughs> right, mr wilson <laughs> yeah that's also one of my favorite movies the movies is big inspiration for me like uh dennis and menace mm -hmm. i'm like a lot of stuff is really um what do you call it like just a lot of humor satire in my work mm -hmm. um here and there sometimes it's serious and other times it's like really funny or whatever and then um so brian wilson uh like amazing painter um marcus kaiser and like everybody attached to him like his whole crew um uh, he's uh very design savvy mm -hmm. he's done stuff with like colleges all over the over the states and um and nascar and like He's just done just about oh, anything wow. yeah. that you could think of. He, uh, him, and uh, his partner Jason Woodbury, um, they've done a, a Jordan Brand mm -hmm. um, event with actually with, with Mariah uh, with social social status. Um, that was pretty cool, just to be able to like show kids how to design stuff and yeah, just like having artists like that to look up to and to see their accomplishments and them to see what I'm doing and co-sign it. And that I, that's oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm that over here like, there. I'm looking behind me like, <laughs> you must be talking about right. the other guy. Exactly, so, yeah. Yeah, those people are really like big influences for me. Like they're all teachers mm -hmm. in their own right. And they also are my teacher. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this is, this is my own question. Okay. Because this has always been like in the back of my mind. How did you land on the name What is Relax? How did that all come about? Because I think that I bought one of your first t-shirts mm -hmm. or something. I was like, what does that mean? What is Relax? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that that answer has changed over the years, mm -hmm. but the origin of it hasn't. But I mean, I'd say it when it started, um, a couple of friends of mine uh, and myself, we were going around campus like with chalk drawings and like 
just like that was like my early days of graffiti i was doing it for it was short-lived but like i started just doing like random chalk stuff because i was afraid to see like get caught doing some stuff so i was just like we're just gonna do this around campus okay uh with the chalk and then uh we was going around downtown doing the same thing we had just finished watching like these documentaries like beautiful losers mm -hmm. it's really dope because it's just a lot of artists on the come up um and watching Watch their story mm -hmm. yeah it's really good it's a good like documentary just uh, about people uh kind of enjoying number one like the biggest takeaway from it was like just learning to stay childlike and so keeping important. a good imagination yeah because yeah, yeah. it'll also keep your mental health in check for real mm -hmm. but um i guess uh, that's another part of relax too is just like being intact with yourself and understanding your boundaries and also the things that you want to reach for to, to you know break those boundaries as well right um right. But it came from uh, the word chill came to mind because I started writing that. And then when I actually started doing some graffiti around town, um, I wrote chill. And then like a character, like a slimy looking like a happy character. And um, that was like one of my first real characters that I made up. And he represented like a childlike spirit and it represented being um, in touch with uh, your imagination and uh, the message chill, it just means that, you know, it's just art, but I'm doing it in a way that's also rebellious. It's, um, it's not, uh, it's kind of frowned upon. So it's just, uh, just a message. And then it turned into, I was like, okay, I want to find a way to connect with people. And like, how do I get my art out? Because number one, I know people at first only recognize me as a graphic designer in the city. Mm -hmm. um, like they saw my art, but it was, most of my clientele was graphic design and I was trying to break away from that and I and I finally kind of like separated from that more mm -hmm. more often than not so I'll dive in back and back back and forth every once in a while but uh, the main idea is I needed something physical to connect people with that they can say okay I identify with this brand and the brand uh, I said I'll call it relax mm -hmm. and then the what is relax is um one of my friends he actually had a name called Oh That's Mike. And um, I thought it was a really cool name because he's really uh -huh. clever. So I was like, what if I just like flipped it and made it my own It's called it What Is Relax? And it's like a campaign of, okay, really finding yourself, like finding what is, what is it? What is your chill? Like what's your relax? Yeah. What's your, not necessarily being calm, mm -hmm. but it means everything. It has everything to do with just stepping outside of yourself and chasing the things you want the most. Like what is your, What's that? The relax is that moment where, you know, you're playing music while you're working or you're creating stuff. And then you realize the music stopped and you're still working. You're still going. And then yes. that, that, that yes. little in between part of inspiration, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's relax right there. So yeah. just like the epitome of being in your element. Oh, I yeah. love it. I love it. So yeah. that's why it's a question because I'm asking you. Yeah. It's not a question for you to find out about me. It's because, but in the end, it's. It's like, it's double-sided. Mm -hmm. It's the question, which is what is relax, but what is relax is myself and the journey of me like becoming what I want to become. Mm -hmm. So you're just like, you're along for the ride, but also I'm trying to show you, you can do this too. Yeah. So, you know, what what is your thing? What's your sweet spot? Yeah, right exactly. There, yeah. When you having fun doing, you know, your whatever you call a hobby, but really it's something that you could be doing for a living mm -hmm. um but i'm also about like again back to the mental health thing like you know i think as black people we have been conditioned to have to prove ourselves and <laughs> go be and over, over and beyond yeah, yeah. over and over when again. other people don't have to work that hard mm -hmm. to have the same benefits or uh reap the same benefits from doing what they love the most or just things that they're good at um, but also like the whole thing behind that is if it's something that you're just interested in, then mm -hmm. that's OK, too. Right. It's OK to like not make it a business, mm -hmm. have something to wind down time with or just, you know, decompress. Yeah. So for me, I play video games a lot. And sometimes I'm back and forth between making it a thing because I'm really good at it. Mm -hmm. But I'm also like that's my time to decompress. And it's like my quiet, not quiet time, but like mm -hmm. it's my time to just let let loose or whatever and just wind down from the day 
Yeah. So. See, mine is to run back here to this arbor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I come in that front door and I come straight beeline just yeah. right here. And kick. that's Levante too. Every time yeah. I see him, like, like what what I appreciate about him about um about him being a DJ is like not just a DJ. He's a producer. So he um when he comes home, he just he opens the door and then just. Straight music back. yeah music's yeah. on and mm -hmm. he's like he's working he's experimenting he's like he'll go live every once in a while mm -hmm. so it's dope to see and it's very inspiring so then you know music is a foundation to some of the stuff i do and the thing to kind of keep things going mm -hmm. and that also inspires me to just keep working too yeah so. so so okay we're 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 coming out of the pandemic yeah thank god that's a it's <laughs> hard to believe yeah. doesn't even hear those words because yeah. it's been forever yeah 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 so during that period of time um what did you learn about yourself what kind of things um what so so did you evolve because i've heard a lot of artists say well yeah i was home and and i had a lot of time to dive into my mm -hmm. artwork or or dive into whatever so so I say the difference for me is I've I've been diving in I've been I've been there I've been like had my nose into you know my own books or whatever I've been studying um, I I I take it seriously and I'd always been trying to find the next thing that was gonna catapult my career as an artist mm -hmm. and um, I've had uh, even before like right before the, which is crazy right before the pandemic pandemic. I already had my breakdown, meltdown situation. Right. So during the pandemic, I was more like, I mean, <laughs> I'm used to struggle. I mean, struggle. That's that's what we've been doing. But right. it is different too because you know some people lost their jobs, some people lost their homes. So it's not something that I take lightly mm -hmm. of the scope of the situation and mm -hmm. you know people's health at risk. But um, yeah, for sure. Um, I I guess. I went through it a little bit differently, but I was also sympathetic and like I understood that everybody has different struggles and you know, we all have the same battle. So um, just with that being said, yeah, I definitely, I just had, the new perspective was at the beginning of the year, what's crazy is my art career shifted right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Like I had got my work in at um, like a, a coffee shop called Enderly mm -hmm. um, on Tuckasegee. So it's not far from where I live. So everything that was happening for me, like in that whole year was, of 2020 was um, everything that I was trying to do, everything that, that I was dreaming about or wanting to do as an artist, it was just, it was one step after the other. It was kind of like, what's next? And then it's the, the next thing on my vision board list. I'm like, wow, so I can keep scratching those off. So wow, the, okay. the, I think the struggle really was me pressing through um, my limitations that I set for myself in my own mind mm -hmm. more so than what was put in front of me because the opportunities were coming in but I was the the separation between me and what I wanted yeah so that was the biggest thing that I put in one of my quotes on a post um, like last year is like I was you know shouting a guy asking him you know why um, aren't things happening for me the way I want them like what why don't I have those things and you know, his response would be, I'm just waiting for you to change. Ooh, so, yeah, that was the hardest pill oh, to swallow wow, for me. Oh, yeah. Because I was I was in my way, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, between um, like doing I did a couple murals mm -hmm. that summer. Um, but before then, I was preparing. I had painted so much. I didn't have enough money to get the paint for the uh, the, the installation. Uh, to get all the paintings made and uh, the supplies for the um, installing my work at Enderly Coffee and, and that was to be up for a year and it was uh, the time was coming shortly and I'm like it's crunch time and it's and I, I painted almost like six pieces within like three to four months and that was, that was a lot for me I never worked that like that big that fast mm -hmm. and I had learned like muscle memory of like a better method of getting from A to B on my process for oh, creating yeah. my pieces. Yeah. So I learned some new things. I was also, for the first time um, in years since like college, 10 years, a 10 year gap of me like framing my own work or mm -hmm. um, creating the wooden panel canvases mm -hmm. that I do now. And um, 
I just had the right people around me and the um, the music I was listening to was really inspiring and it was it was keeping me motivated to feel like I'm the man. So you need that community yeah. around you. I mean that yeah. is that is very in important to have people around you that um you know really kind of keep you grounded mm -hmm. and, as well as keep you motivated. Yeah. That circle is important cuz mm -hmm. there's some people that are around you that don't really um feel the same way or you know you may have sometimes you'll get friends who who become envious of you know your your success yeah. or your um just you do I, I mean you got a new car and it's like somebody's you know feeling some kind of way because you always it's just one more thing that they that they have over you or that you have over them mm -hmm. or whatever so it's it's just weird to because sometimes you can feel it and um that's that energy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but luckily most of the, the majority of people that i know are are like grounded mm -hmm. and if not there's you know and i'm close enough with them and if i sense that then they're still my brother or sister and i'm i'm gonna you know meet them in the middle or i just you know i fall back gracefully and let them get them time to you know figure them out but if it gets to a point where i, I would have to address it then you know we do that but for the most part i'm just grateful for my circle overall mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's great do you ever have artist block yes all the time i just came out of an art funk like <laughs> <laughs> last month like the beginning uh -huh. of this month right and it lasted for almost three weeks mm -hmm. uh from yeah from the end of last month all the way up until the end of this one so we're at the end yeah so literally a week ago i was like oh it just kind of it kicked in and i was back to drawing everything mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it was it was it sucked but i mean every time it happens i know what it is but it's just you your body and it's responding to you, you know, whether you need more rest or you just, you just, it's just not time to right. start again. Yeah, because I notice in, in like some of my work, I, I can be thinking about it, mm -hmm. but if it's not time for that piece to come forth, it will not come out. Yeah. yeah. Even when you do it, it's not going to look right. Right, right. So I just, I gave up. I was like, I surrender. I'm going to do something else. Mm -hmm. And, um, and of course, that's not counting for like anything with deadlines because sometimes uh, the biggest thing that I was uh, explaining recently uh, to a class I was teaching was uh, finished work is better than a you know um, a perfect work. So just mm, do it. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. And like we were talking before on the phone about um, another one, one of my artist friends that she had a hard time uh, getting over some of the mistakes she made. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you might as well just finish it. Because she was right at the end. And I'm like, you're, you're bugging about one scratch right. on the canvas that is just like one extra line that you didn't mean to paint. And I'm like, but you, you did all this other work. Yeah. And then we're not going to see it mm -hmm. because we don't know what's yeah. in her mind as the artist. Mm -hmm. You know, artists start with the, um, well, you know, I was uh, just, you know, practicing a little bit or I was... This is a little, it's a little something. It's nothing, you know, nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. And they try to disclaim the the work before you even get a chance to look at it and enjoy it. And nine times out of 10, they're just like tripping that you made this amazing piece. So yeah, yeah we're our worst critics all the time. Yeah. I just listened to a post um, by another uh, artist. He said, stop, stop um, uh, underestimating your artwork. Mm -hmm. He said, brag about it you got to you, yeah because who's who else is going to do it right because you got to hype it up yeah because again no one knows what it's supposed to look like yeah we're looking at it and we're like oh my god that is that is the most yeah amazing like when i see your thing. stuff like i see all this and it's you know you see the mistakes more out more than i would ever because mm -hmm. it looks it all looks finished to me yeah and that's really what matters most but um i saw another guy um i interviewed I don't remember who it was, but he said the same thing. Like, it's art is never really finished. You're never yeah, done. No, You're never no. really done with it. And I think we had that conversation mm -hmm. too. It's never really done. Yeah. It's just um. It's just you're done, at the time. Like, I, I'm trying to find the words that I wrote down from what someone said because it was so powerful and simple. It was, you know, um, oh yeah. So, it's never done. It's just do. 
as oh, in it's, it's just never, time. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was like, yeah, let me um, <laughs> let me keep that in my. I'm gonna put yeah. that over my my desk. So it's when I'm working done. on my projects, because that happened to me uh, the beginning of this year, because it's like kind of like coming into the last leg of the pandemic and everything mm -hmm. in December, January, and I'm working on the um, the comic. Uh, it's a COVID um, co uh, collaboration um, comic book where uh, CJC Charlotte Journalism they mm -hmm. get they got two artists. No, they got, I'm sorry, they got a journalist and they got an artist. And then they paired them together and mm -hmm. they took the journalist story and then that's what I was doing with me and Tall Chris and um, a few other artists like Wally V, good uh, good people in the city, like all artists that I recognize and, and appreciate. They, uh, we all had our own particular project and um, that project was, it wasn't difficult, it just took a lot of time. So by that time I was already, uh, comfortable with the soft, new software I've been using and then uh, making a comic and everything and mm -hmm. just that whole process of trying to get from start to finish it was just you just got to start and just get it done and yeah. not think about perfection because I've seen I know how I can render something I know okay the end result is going to be um, like I've seen all my finished works and I'm I'm sure of the how like every step is and sometimes you either miss some of the steps or you won't be able to go as hard as you want to mm -hmm. and you just gotta finish the page so I've, I've learned that lesson too especially working with comics it wasn't a long comic it was 10 pages but 10 pages is a lot when you're writing it not writing but the writing was already there through the journalist uh article but yeah the the coloring the drawing the, the and then writing it out behind. yeah Try trying to put a picture to that word yeah exactly that that journalist yeah. has put down yeah Mm -hmm. yeah. And luckily there was a lot of reference images. It was a lot of good stuff, but I also wanted to make it my own too. So mm -hmm. that was a fun experience just to say that I did something, uh, an official, I got paid to do a comic. Because when, uh, when I was younger, I always wanted to do a comic. I, I drew my own, but it was a stick guy. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know what happened to it. I wish I could find those, but I drew this kid. And I also do like flip books. So I was oh, yeah, always in the animation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do flip books. And I, um, I, that started in middle school because other kids were doing it. And it was just like the the thing at the time, so yeah, yeah love love animation. Yeah, flip books are are cool. Some of the kids at uh, Northwest. Oh, know. they still do. Oh my god. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ben, Ms. I feel bad because I'm like wasting <laughs> uh, the sticky, the notepads. Yes. Like the yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think um, sometimes when the notepads disappear off the teacher's yeah. desk. Yeah, you know why. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Um. Let's see. Uh, what advice would you give? No. Here's the question. What's the greatest advice that you learned from a coworker? From a coworker? Uh -huh. Remember the conversation that we um, were having? I'm trying to remember because when you when you uh, when you sent that, I was like, I'm trying to remember what was it? Uh, um, I like should have wrote it down. Um, man, that's a lesson learned. You know, right? Because because yeah. <laughs> I I know. Hmm. It was a coworker. It was a guy. Um, he was telling you, um, what was it? Um, kind of like he didn't get excited about. Right. Okay. Got you. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Um, so, um, usually when I go to work, I'll have my stuff on like my art and everything. So, every once in a while, I run into yeah. people who also do business, do their own business, and they want to you know, collaborate or um, just like exchange resources or just work together. And one guy, he was showing me, uh, telling me about a proposal he had that w what we could do to work together. And he was just so ha so amped about it, really excited. And and um, and I'm just like, yeah, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And we're talking and we get to the end of it. And he's like, so, you, you know, you, you don't seem excited, man. This is dope. And, and I just think to myself, like, I'm, not excited until I see the end result. Like I, I got to see this thing through because I've been through several situations where my work has been taken advantage of, or um, mm -hmm. I've had work that just didn't properly get paid for or anything. And I'm just at the point now, like, um, and it's not about the check, but when I see that check, that's when I know, okay, we we did it. We can celebrate now. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I'm I'm more. Um, adamant about seeing things through 
that's and that's that that's the advice that I also gave in turn to uh, some of my friends who I started doing comic books with mm -hmm. and I just said I only got one rule we got to finish this thing that's it yeah 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 because I, I I've I got plenty of ideas that I've been that's sitting in my sketch but I have like archives of sketchbooks that are just like waiting for me to go back to mm -hmm. and touch on those ideas but if I never start it and then finish it, because starting is the hard part, especially, but like seeing it through, it's the beginning and end that sucks. Right. That middle is, it's okay, but it's like you already, you already know the process by now. If you made it to the middle, you're just supposed to do the same thing you've been doing. It's about the consistency is the hard part mm -hmm. in the middle, but the beginning of like the, the cultivating the idea and then during the end, it's like where you're finalizing everything. That's where it's tough because you see all the mistakes and the blemishes and you're like, oh, you know, just God, please let me get this right. I, I want to get it to this, you know, and it's mm -hmm. it's not always going to be that. I think it's good to just just finish it and then move on to the next thing so you can make something even better. Yeah, yeah. because for me, the how comes in doing. Mm -hmm. all, always, you know, that first piece is going to teach you what to do or mm -hmm. what not to do on that second piece. And, and it just keeps rolling on. So, yeah, yeah we have to finish it. Yeah, just finish. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the lesson. Uh, let's see. What advice would you give a young person who wants to be an artist? Mm. Um, I would say pick another career. No, I'm playing. No, <laughs> for real. Um, it's number one. Okay, so there's a few things. Uh, there's no such thing as competition because I promise you yes. there is you can eat anywhere you go. There's so much to do, so little time. Yeah. That's literally the the first thing that I would tell anybody because somebody uh, somebody just came to me, um, a, a, a peer of mine, a fellow artist, was uh, asking about a um, just a, a job offer, like just for like a small gig. And I just knew that I didn't have time, so I just had to um, just let them know um, that uh, ahead of time, like, yeah, I, I don't think um, I'd be ready, but also like that's another thing is protecting your energy, protecting your time as well. Ooh, yes, yeah, yeah, for real. Because mm -hmm. um, I've I've pulled my hair out over everything, from like the the smallest things to the biggest things, um, in the process of working with a client, um, or just creating my own work. So, um, just not taking it too seriously. Um, like treat it like uh prof like yourself like a pro professional of course but but to just lighten up a little bit um that would be that's also a little advice to myself mm -hmm. like my younger self is to you know you already got everything you need yeah you know yeah because the stuff i used to make i can't go back 100 mm percent -hmm. but i can always um just kind of like go with the flow and flow with the current because I'm always like moving forward. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I'm not able to tap in currently into that where I was then. Um, and it came from different places in my life as well too. So um, I can always create that energy, but to do it that way may not necessarily come out the same way, which is okay, I'm okay with. Yeah. And um, also start over. Like if you if you create a piece and you don't like it, it's okay to start over. And this is from like a, a concept artist standpoint, like mm -hmm. um, because uh, a lot of artists like try to go in the industry and they realize, um, you know, not everybody has the same, um, what do you call it? Uh, there's, um, everybody has different job titles and everybody wants to be, uh, the first artist title you think of is a concept artist. Uh, if you're going into like the game industry or, or the art industry, mm -hmm. like doing stuff for movies or whatever. and um, there's so many other titles out there, so that's another thing. Is just there's so many other jobs out there that you could be doing. You look at the credits, and all those people had a job, and yours could be that entry level thing, and then you work your way up to the things that you really want to do. Because the concept artist job is almost somewhat of a superstar job, mm -hmm. like they call the big guys for that sometimes, uh, depending on the studio and what they can afford. And um, uh, there's just so many nuances, and just like don't just look at one type of medium or one type of uh, profession, yeah. uh, even if it's related to the art field, you can like dive into so many different things mm -hmm. that it's literally enough for everybody. So just kind of 
going full circle to, you know, yes, um, there are people out there that will try to take advantage of your work or try to copy or whatever, but there's also nothing new under the sun. And there's also, um, every inspiration came from something, but um, yeah, just just go for it. Mm -hmm. That's my advice. It's, it's a lot of advice, but that first one is just finish. Yeah. Yeah. Just finish it. Yeah. Start it. If you start it, finish it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, let's see. Are there any uh, upcoming events um, that, like, you can share with us? Um, okay. So, yes. Um, I'm not certain about this one because I think we had to reschedule it, but I was really excited about this. So all my art... Um, my art OGs, my mentors, all of those guys, we were uh, planning an art show together, but we have to um, move that to another date, which I was excited about, but I also am glad because I wasn't 100% ready. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I was in that artist funk at the time and I kept trying to make stuff and I couldn't, and I was gonna be really upset. Yeah. I was gonna have to pull an old piece and try to you know make it fit the theme. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably happening, happening maybe either the end of this year or next year mm -hmm. with um, all the, the, uh, the all-stars in the art game they're all like gathering some of the younger guys mm -hmm. um that they think are like doing pretty good in the art scene and um coming up july i'll be in something called kameha khan and kameha khan is based on dragon ball um like one of the most popular anime they ever come out mm -hmm. and that is um and most likely it'll be other stuff there too because it's cartoon based it's gonna be i'm pretty sure there's gonna be people out there from all types of cartoons and shows. Um, there's like usually panel discussions and um, like guest artists and guest voice actors and mm -hmm. uh, celebrities that usually come out, but it's gonna be in Texas. I don't know what part I forgot, but um, uh, my friend Miguel and I, Miguel's a tattoo artist and we grew up together. We was always drawing Dragon Ball together, like mm -hmm. just like the uh, in class drawing cartoons and he was like, yeah man, one day we gonna, we be doing doing it big so we we was always excited about that like just bouncing off each other and learning from each other and now we're going to be at an event out of state together. um just together yeah drawing wow. stuff and i think he'll be tattooing mostly mm -hmm. so that's going to be cool to see yeah yeah i'm excited that is so cool oh my gosh um so for oh let's talk about your artwork oh yeah yeah so, so um here we have um I'll let you talk about it. Okay. This is called Shangri-La. And it's like, uh, what it actually means is like, um, you know, that place or state of mind that gives you um, peace. And it kind of like is a utopia. So mm -hmm. this woman or girl, it's a girl, and she's actually a young girl. So she's in her mind. Um, she's already at her age, uh, ahead of her years, because this monument that is above her head is literally the foundation she's created for herself. Um, I usually, back then I used to use a lot of different um, monuments and structures from different cultures. So it's like a little bit of Arabic, Japanese, um, like Egyptian culture, different stuff. So it, it spawns from different Indian, uh, all of the different regions that you could think of, the most popular regions or uh, continents that have uh, standalone, standout uh, structures. Architecture was a big thing for me. So I was, um, I was very crafty with like putting together stuff with like Legos as a kid and mm -hmm. I always wanted to like build things But um, this is my idea of like a structure that is you know It's like it's not really there, but this is really just a head wrap on her head But you know her hair underneath, mm -hmm. you know her state of mind. She's very proud So that's what this one is about is um, just that utopia that is in your own head, wow. which is yeah. the Shangri-La vibe mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's like in order. It's chronological order is this one um, Shangri-La and then the next one is um, this is just called do the right thing and all the words in here say do the right thing mm -hmm. in large text but just spread out and it's hidden words and affirmations inside and um, what's cool about this one is on top of it underneath it there's another piece under it and uh, I was just painting over it because I was done with it but the some some pigments or some paints are like really translucent or that you yeah. can see a little bit through it so mm -hmm. i i left it because i was like i really like that because i really um enjoy digital art so the excuse me i thought about a digital art aspect behind it where you had all these layers and textures and stuff 
so that's the approach I took because that's it's stuff that I learned before and I had wanted to take that approach which I know how to do better now even in digital art so it's like everything's kind of lending itself for the next medium mm -hmm. like if I learned how to use pen pressure on a tablet drawn tablet then it helps me with using a brush in real life because it's so much more sensitive mm -hmm. like with a brush it's just you don't really get punished you do but you don't get punished as much for using um, a brush versus a digital tablet stylus mm -hmm. um, and so it, it kind of lended itself to teach me other things but this is like Spike Lee from Do the Right Thing so this is his actual um, the scene where he's walking down the street um, I think he's delivering pizza and um, I took a different approach to my design where I I would cut up the um, the face like I would um I was in a phase a creative funk and I was in a phase where I was just making stuff that I thought that would appeal to to people so that would I wanted to sell mm -hmm. and um, this all this came from a good place but also like the the motive around this time was different and I think it changed a little bit over the stuff that I was making and over the years I had to get back to what I really wanted to make my origins which is like later down the road in here which is um, it's the uh, 40th anniversary to um, 40 year anniversary to Gundam Mobile Suit Gundam is a show an anime that came out in Japan mm -hmm. around 1979 mm -hmm. and in here I have examples of just um, still like in this idea for the do the right thing, uh, the graphic design elements uh, taking like a poster vibe. Also, in comparison to the last one, is um, these two were old pieces that I did years ago. Um, I did this one a lot longer back in college. Like um, everything on top is actually new. Like I did it uh, two years ago in 2019, the 40 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. But the underneath it, I've got. Um, these highlighter colors and everything and those were oh, yeah, right yeah it was like a surrealistic vibe so it was stairs yeah. but it was going down if you viewed the stairs and I remember the day that I made it um, I was in my sketch pad and I was in the lobby of my art school uh, my art department and as I was looking forward the way I was sitting in the chair the angle I saw it I saw a uh, chair uh, stairs the way I saw it I saw the stairs going down and then the staircase took a left turn and it would go up um, until the second floor and I, w I took just the stairs and then I thought of it like how does it look from another angle and then one more angle so I literally had like stairs going down different ways thinking of MC Escher which mm -hmm. is another one of my inspirations and um, but it's literally just solid colors there's no outlines in that in some and so in some of my old work um, I experimented with a lot of that type of stuff where there's these crazy colors and all this stuff but also involves stuff dealing with the mind and so surrealism like with with uh, wild ethereal things like just thinking about your mental state and the the brain and uh, I have words in there that do say like brain and I got puzzles because I like puzzles but, but also it's like it's also like a mind-boggling type of piece so then that's that was the old piece but then I covered it up but I left a, a little bit of it because yeah. I wanted to remember um, that piece and never forget um, just where I came from mm -hmm. and but also like look forward to the future while creating this because this was me when I got back into not being ashamed of things that I'm into you know because um, you know sometimes people frown upon like stuff like you know people who still are into cartoons and stuff like that but mm -hmm. you know even though your kids are watching cartoons that are made by adults, a whole team of adults, right. and all that, we can go on about that. But, mm -hmm. but you know, I was I did have my moments where I was like kind of shying away from anime related stuff, and I was just doing my own thing, which is perfectly fine. But I think it's good to have that balance. Like, do your own stuff mostly, and then you know, every once in a while, dive into you know your your favorites and your hobbies and things that um, inspire you. So it, it was this show. And also made the character look more like me, which is a black person. Gave him locks. The main yeah. that that character in that story who's wearing that outfit is actually a white person. He's or he's Asian um, in the in the anime. So um, so he and I, I wanted to make the person look like me, but in the shoes of a character that I like the most in the show. Yeah. So that's what that means, and it's just got like a poster vibe, graphic design elements in there. My new signature that I started adding in. Ah. 
which is yeah, cool. Yeah, I like that. So I, I I have that right there. That's the same one. This uh, mm -hmm. on the bottom right. It's a uh, it's the same signature that I, I made over time. But the cool part is the addition where I add the signature uh, characters, the balloons, which I always have every once in a while in my designs. That is really cool. I like that because um, when I was down in Miami and we went to an art gallery, one of the artists. Um, he actually carved well his um artwork had like layers of um some type of paste type mm -hmm. form but yeah but but he carved his name into each one of his pieces oh. which was like really, really yeah cool. maybe did we see that together or was this um another time this was another time okay yeah i remember one guy uh, just seeing that he put like money into one of his pieces oh, yeah, too that was yeah, really cool yeah Tra trace Tra uh, that trace sounds artist Trace. Trace artist, because I used to follow him yeah. on uh, uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. and then somehow he just disappeared. Oh, he just disappeared? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he stopped. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe he changed his name, because you know how it goes. Like, you click on the thing again, mm -hmm. and it shows user not found. So maybe he changed his name up, and you don't realize that it's another name. Yeah. But that's that's so difficult, you know. Yeah. Just trying to retrace your steps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, um, I kind of think we went through most of my questions okay cool yeah. um and let's see um i'm going to put uh in in the description um the way to contact josh his website his email his uh, uh instagram and um his website definitely has his artwork that is for sale Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we definitely encourage you to go and check out his his work. And Josh, thank you so much for no being problem. my first guest. Oh, my gosh. I love Let, it. I'm so glad you asked me. Yes. Let's toast. Yes. To the first show and many more. All right. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, stay tuned. Uh, I will post this one and let you know when the next one um, is ready to go. All right.